Hey friends, welcome back. If you're new here, hello, welcome. My name is Kate. Here on this channel we talk all about mom life and shirts that don't work. <clears throat> we talk all about mom life. I am a foster parent, so we talk a lot about foster care and adoption as well. And you'll also see some stuff about intentional living and living with purpose because that is a huge passion of mine. So if any of that interests you, I would love to have you subscribe. Hit that red button down below and join this community. So today we're going to be talking about the six types of foster parents. So the first type of foster parents that I see, and I come across this quite often actually, are people that come to foster care through infertility. And this could be a couple that has battled with infertility and has tried to have biological children um, for several months or several years now and it's not happening for them. This could also be infertility through same sex and you can't have a biological child naturally that way. This could be couples that got together later in life and naturally cannot bear children anymore. So many people come to foster care through infertility. I think this is amazing. I think this is beautiful. I never wish infertility on anybody. I think it's horrible when you so desperately want to have a child and it's just not happening for you and you know it seems to be happening for people around you and you look at the kids in the foster care system with you know often sometimes the parents didn't want that pregnancy or you know didn't treat that pregnancy the way you would infertility is horrible but i think it's the beginning of some amazing foster care stories and some amazing families built through foster care and adoption so one note i wanted to talk about is if you are new and you are looking into foster care because you cannot naturally conceive because you're experiencing infertility i want to not warn you but in our home study there was a big question air part about um, infertility and if we had struggled with it and if we had dealt with those emotions and why do we want to fo foster do we want to foster because of infertility there was a lot of questions about this and I actually ran into a couple people at our pride training that the agency had said they want them to wait six months go through some counseling go through, go through some therapy and then reapply to be a foster parent because when you are parenting children that come from trauma and you're trying to deal with your own trauma and your own grief about not being able to conceive a child, it's really not a great match. You need to have kind of dealt with those feelings and dealt with that grief. And that doesn't mean that you have to accept it and be okay with it, but you have to have at least come to terms with the fact and not treat foster parenting as your second choice. You know, they'd want you to spend some time getting educated on trauma parenting, dealing with kids that have some of these behaviors, just making sure that you're mentally and emotionally stable to care for these kids. It's awful. It's something that's never going to go away. It's a, you know, a hole that I don't think can ever be filled no matter how you grow your family. Growing your family in different ways is absolutely beautiful, but if you have the deep desire to have biological children and it's not happening, like there's always going to be a little hole and that's okay. But does that sadness and does that grief kind of rule your decisions and rule your life and rule your way of thinking. That's what they're going to try and determine in your foster care home study. So I just want to encourage you if you're watching and you have come from that path that just really be prepared that you've dealt with your own grief first before you get into foster parenting. The second type of foster parent I see quite often are empty nesters or the grandparent type foster parents. You know their kids are gone or they're in college, they're all out of the house and they still have a lot of love to give and you know maybe they're retired and they just they feel like they want to get back to the community and do good and you know they love kids and it's they're sad that their kids have all grown up and gone and maybe they don't have grandkids yet or maybe they do we have quite a few in our agency the empty nesters or the older grandparent aged foster parents and i think this is a really beautiful thing because they're using their later years in life to give back to these kids and you know, they're not necessarily willing to adopt in the end because they're not going to be around forever, but grandparent type foster parents are really good at transition um, and they're able to give just as much love, doesn't matter their age of course, they're able to provide a really safe and nurturing home in the transition time, whether that child's going back home to be reunified or whether that child will go on to adoption after. The third type of foster parent I see, and this would probably be the rarest, but people that are choosing to adopt through foster care as their first choice. They don't have infertility struggles or they've never even tried to conceive a child naturally, but they just truly feel that there's so many kids in this world that need parents to love them. You know, why bring more into this world? They, you know, truly feel that love makes a family and blood doesn't make a family that just because you're genetically related it does not mean that you're a family. Families are born in many beautiful different ways. This is another type of foster parent. They just want to adopt through foster care because they know there's a need and I think this is a really beautiful kind of couple or individual. They make some of the best foster and adoptive parents. 
So the next type of foster parent, and I don't see this so often in my own agency, but I see it a lot in the online community, and I think it's so amazing, and that is single foster parents. First of all, before I get into this, I just want to say you guys are all amazing. I know it's many single mamas, but I, there's even some single foster dads out there, and I think you guys are awesome. To do this alone and to not have that other person to lean on, to help you out when the kids are sick, to give you a night off, to give you some time for self-care, to give you someone to talk through all the emotions. When you don't have that significant other, I think the hard parts of foster care are magnified because you're trying to deal with it all on your own. And I think often single foster parents have amazing support systems within their friends and their family, but still they are taking on all of that res responsibility on their own. You know, for me, I, to think about doing it without my husband, like I think I could, but it would be so hard. So, so I give mad props to all you single foster parents. I think you guys are amazing. They want to have a family. They want to care for kids and they get into foster care because they know that there's a need for it. I don't have a partner that having biological children is an option, but they're ready to be parents and they're ready to care for these kids. And I think, I just think you guys are so awesome. Next type of foster parents I see quite often are Christian foster parents. And I would say that this is the category that I fall into. We truly feel that we are called to foster care, called to adopt. There are many verses in the Bible that talk about this and it's just somewhere that God has really convicted us. And we genuinely feel like it's our calling and it's our purpose to help care for these vulnerable children and to be a forever home for a child that truly needs a family. You know, there's a lot of people out there with the same mindset and that's why they come to foster care. Yes, I genuinely want to help these kids. Yes, there's many other reasons, but first and foremost, oh, God is my reason, my family's reason why we do foster care. We truly feel that that's something that God has called us to. And the last type of foster parent, and this is the one that is a sticky subject, and that is money. Now, I want to say there's two types of foster parents that fall under this money category. And one, let's get them out of the way, they're the bad foster parents, the ones that are genuinely just doing it for a paycheck and they don't really care for their kids and they don't really do the best to help these kids deal with their trauma and, you know, they're letting them sleep there, giving them their basic needs, but they're not really doing anything above that. I don't think there's many of them because A, I think people can see through them and they don't get approved or shut down quickly because of an allegation or something or they just quit fostering altogether because they realize it is not worth the money. The money is never the reason that you should foster. So let's get those people out of the way. Yes, they exist. It's an unfortunate thing. This world is not perfect. We are all sinful fallen people and fortunately that exists. People see it as a paycheck and that really breaks my heart because these kids are not a paycheck. The money is for helping you to parent and care for the child and provide for all their needs. Not just giving them the basics and, you know, a couple outfits and living off the rest of the money. Like that is not what the money is for. And people that don't see that, it just, it really breaks my heart. However, there is another side to people that do it for the money, but not selfishly and only for the money, I would say. But I have seen, and I've seen it in my agency and some of um, the people that have come across, they are foster parents because they want to stay home while their kids are young and they want to earn an income while their kids are young. And having, you know, another couple kids there or having another child there helps them to do so. Well, I don't believe that this is fully the right reason that people get into foster care. It is a way that some people come through, but they genuinely do care and love for these kids. And I look at it like people that would do home daycare. They genuinely love and care for these kids and they want to be home with their kids very often or they want to be home. They want to work from home and that is a way that they can do it. So yes, there are some foster parents that are like this and you know, I have a single mom friend who actually fosters because you know in order for her to work and put her kids in daycare she would have nothing left over and she feels like she's spending no time with her kids so she became a foster parent yes to help a child to have the finances to help her stay home if it's any new information that becoming a foster parent doesn't you're not going to become rich off of it there are private foster homes that pay quite a bit more than provincial or state-based agencies you know and there's various reasons and I'll do another video about public versus private um, foster agencies but you know people that often do it for the money you'll see them go through those agencies because they find that they get a lot more support they can complain a lot more they get a lot more money there's many great private foster agencies and foster parents that foster through private agencies don't get me wrong at all I'm not saying all are like that but I'm saying when you do see some people that do it for the money 
often you find them in the higher paying private agencies. So doing it for the money is never worth it, but those foster parents do exist. Not all have bad intentions and selfish intentions. Some people look at it as a way to help them stay home with their kids or help to pay for a private school education or something, but they still genuinely care for the children. I'm not saying all people that fall into this category are bad foster parents. I think either side of the coin, you realize that you're never going to get rich off foster care and it's not worth it as far as what you have to do and how tied down you are to get that like paycheck at the end of the month. Anyways, it's not really a subject I like to talk about because it's really heartbreaking that those kind of people exist, but they do. So comment down below about what type of foster parent are you or what path brought you to foster care. I would love to know. It'd be really interesting to see. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and for being here for another video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you on the next one. Bye!